And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success Morning Coffee. I got my coffee. And now we're going to have a little coffee chat. So, man, I've been working on getting the studio upgraded. So, um, we got the back wall done. I'm just looking. I can see kind of other side. It's like I can always mix this up because they reverse the camera angle. So, it's opposite what it looks like. But um, I'm here to talk morning, you know, daily things that we go through, the situations that maybe that uh, I went through or I'm going through or other people are going through in my life. And um, yeah, what's up, Nikki? If you guys haven't joined over on YouTube, I need 20 more subscribers to get to 2,200 on YouTube, which is pretty big considering that I was like at 110 or a little over a year ago. And it's been fun to watch this go. Um, as I was telling you, like as I pull up the podcast stats, because this is this is just the podcast stats, not the YouTube stats. I'm at 45,100 downloads. I've been doing this for four years now. And it's interesting because like on TikTok, which we're live on TikTok now, I wish that restream, which streams to YouTube would actually work. It'd be great. Um, as something that, you know, I could stream it over here so that all the conversation can be in one place. But TikTok hasn't figured that out. Supposedly, Instagram has learned how to use Restream, but um, I just look in and I don't see how to connect it. But all technical things. And um, although I have a master's degree in educational technology, I don't have a whole lot of uh, skill when it comes to being technological on things. So it is what it is. But I appreciate you guys all hanging out. Jack's over there on TikTok. Thanks for hanging. Um, we do this every morning. And, you know, it's funny. Last night I was talking to a friend of mine. And I just was thinking about a lot of things. Um, I used to be a teacher. And I am now a salesperson. And what I had noticed a lot about this time of year that is very interesting is some people handle it in different ways. Some people love Christmas. Some people, Thanksgiving happens, they got their damn Christmas tree up. Like it seems like it's getting sooner and sooner, right? Um, I've always been a person who is not a big fan of it. Not because bad things going on in life. I just don't, I don't know. When I was growing up as a child, I got Christmas gifts, right? Like you get, my parents had not a lot. And, um, I got like three things plus on Christmas day, we got one big thing, right? So like that big thing could be like one year I got a bike. Um, one year I got a baseball glove. One year we got a Nintendo to share. So like you would get, we'd get like three things one night. So like on Christmas, Christmas Eve was is the big thing in my family. Like Christmas Eve is bigger than Christmas day. Um, we get together open presents, you know, like, or when we were little, same thing, we'd open all our presents on Christmas Eve. That was kind of the big thing because Christmas day, we'd go spend it with family. You wake up in the morning and you open the big gift, right? So, you know, three gifts, usually like some clothes, like a pair of pants, a shirt, a sweatshirt, something like that to keep us going. And then, you know, the big thing, the, the, the fun thing we thought, you know, you get a Nintendo, which I mean, shit, that was like 1988, 89, whatever. That was the cool thing, right? Or, you know, you like you get a, we got Transformers or GI Joes or things like that. I got a remote control car one year. Um, Pretty cool stuff, right? So like, that's how it was. Sounds like that's the way it was. Nikki's house too. But that was mine, right? Like, and then now as we get older and what I have found with like my parents, you know, they wanted us to go to school. They wanted us to get they wanted us to go to college. They wanted us to make more money. They wanted us to be able to give our kids a better life than what we had, which our life wasn't that bad. And I think that's where a lot of things get lost is like three, four gifts is not a big thing. Like that's not bad. That is good. And 
when you start to make more money and you start to be able to provide more things, you end up having a crazy freaking Christmas. And over 20-something years, like it's just got bigger and bigger. And I think this happens when you have kids. Um, and it, it, this may not be your situation, but this is kind of the way it is like this. So I watched my brother with his kids handing out presents like crazy. It's like these kids sit here and like open up a present and then throw it to the side and open up a present, throw it to the side and open up a present, throw it to the side. It's like, oh my gosh, they're not even like grateful. They don't even understand that this costs money. And I struggle with this because I have a real hard time for my daughter to understand what money is and how money works because it just, she just didn't get it. Even when I've tried those lessons of like, all right, here, you've saved your birthday money for how long, right? And you save that birthday money and you save that birthday money and you save that birthday money. And then next thing you know, you go and you spend it and you get what you want, but it's not that big of a deal to them. Like to me, I got a job when I was 15, like I was old enough to work because in, well, I guess I was 14 because in Idaho, you can get a work permit when you're 14, but I lived in Oregon. So I couldn't work in Oregon until I was 15. And so um, it was crazy because once I got that, like, you know, your parents buy your clothes, your parents buy this, and like you're more prone to not take care of things because you don't have any responsibility for them. And th that's the big thing is like now whatever you buy is not a big deal. My daughter, I bought her a new pair of shoes the other day. She wanted white ones. I told her no. We went back and forth, and I said you can have white ones if you clean them every single day because they're going to look filthy and I'm not going to be okay with that because then I'm going to have to buy you another pair because they're just filthy. So what does she do? She goes and she picks out a pair of white Air Force Ones, which are like leather. And I just know they're going to get filthy. And last night she came home and I said, you got to clean those every single day. She didn't clean them. So this morning I got to make sure she cleans them because I told her she had to do it. But she didn't get it. She didn't understand. You need to take care of that stuff. But the first pair of shoes I ever bought myself lasted a year instead of lasting six months because I paid for them and I wanted to make sure that they were good forever. You know, so the responsibility thing is just a real tough thing to teach right now for me in general. Anyway, I got off on a tangent that way. But the reality of what's going on right now, I've been noticing that there's a lot of people who are having mental health issues right now from people on my Instagram live. You know, last week I ended up and it's, it's, a, it was a crazy, crazy thing. And it's still up on my friend's page, but the guy threatened me, threatened my life, slandered me, said a bunch of really bad stuff to me on a live. He's on the screen saying all this stuff about me and he has no clue who I am. Um, I've also heard some talk about, you know, like people having breakups or people just depressed and people just not having all these things happening, you know, and it's crazy. But I started thinking about why. And when I was a teacher, the kids started acting up more before we take a break. So summer break, Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, spring break, they would act out more. And I can bet you that there's a lot of data if you go into a school and you find out that there are many kids who have problems during this time of year or during a break time. And it's a little bit deeper than what you think it is, because if you don't really think about it, you say, why? Well, the problem is, is that this is a time where they're supposed to be with their family, right? When they go to school every single day, they have like a security, a, a gosh, now I can't even remember what word I'm looking for, but like they have that, right? Like they have, they have a schedule. They got classes, they got breakfast, they got lunch, they got dinner. Or, well, they don't have dinner, but they have, like, now in schools they have breakfast, right? So they have all these things that keep them going. And they go through and they have breakfast, they have class, they have dinner, they have lunch. Um, sorry, there's someone over in TikTok that's an idiot. So let's just go ahead and get rid of him. Sorry for the distraction, but that happens. And um, sometimes you just have to get rid of people. So that's what we do.
Uh, whatever. I'm not going to mess with it. Over in TikTok, some some idiots over here on TikTok. Um, it's no big deal. It happens from time to time. But this is the thing right here. Like someone is trying to grab attention from something because they don't have attention. That's the way that it works. Um, so there you go. Whatever. Who cares? What's up, Frank? How's it going? You know, Frank is a Frank. Frank, you are a moderator. All right. So anyway, um, no big deal. It is what it is. Um, people are running their mouths over there. And this is what happens, right? Okay. So this is part of my, my conversation. So you have, you have that structure. That's the word that I'm looking for. When you are sitting there and um, you are going to school, like they have structure, they have, they get on the bus, you know, mom and dad wake them up, they get on the bus, they go have breakfast, they go through school, they go have lunch, and then they go home and dinner's like the only thing that they have to worry about, right? And then they have to do their homework and all that other stuff. Well, it doesn't happen during Christmas because typically right now in any of these families, both parents are working for the most part. Or if both parents aren't working, there's something at home that doesn't have that structure. You're like, go watch TV, go outside and play, go do this, go do that. Or, you know, maybe they're an abusive family. Maybe there's um, just things that don't give them that structure that they need every single day. You know, and a lot of parents will send their kid to school and let the teachers take care of that. You're the disciplinarian for the day. They take it as a break to go away. Not a lot, but some, you know. So anyway, that's what happens. That's when these mental health issues develop. Also, like you could be going through like a breakup or you could be going through. Um, maybe you don't like being around your family, but you know that you have to be around your family and you get anxious and you act out and it becomes all about you and you start to notice those things over and over again. So thank you, Frank. Um, so this is the thing. Okay. In this situation, maybe this is not you. Maybe that's not, you know. Maybe that's not your thing, but the, you are around those people. And you have to be somewhat understanding, but how understanding can you be? Okay. And that's the thing. You have to start thinking about what those people are doing. What's their motive? And does it, and, and whether you're going to let it affect you or not. Now, I'm an empath. I probably hang out around a lot of friends who are empaths. Most people, because, you know, you get stuck with people who you are. So, like, I'm empathetic to whatever is going on in most people's situations. So, it's, I get it. Like, I understand it. And this is what I tell myself. I tell myself this all the time. You have to be willing to control what you can control, okay? Because we feel what other people feel. A friend of mine's going through something, and it's tough, right? Like, he's having a hard time with his situation. And I feel it. I've been through it. You know, I've worked through it myself. But I can also understand why he feels the way he feels. Okay. So with that, then that becomes, well, this becomes my problem because it's his problem. Right. Um, but the, the reality of this is that you cannot control the reaction that a person has. You can, cannot control what they're going through, but you can control how you react to it. And again, I know that that's hard. I know that it's a tough thing because I do the same thing. Like, there are so many things that, you know, like I'm going to go to my situation. Like I'm sitting here, someone's selling their house, right? Like, so I'm, I was trying to sell my house and then I decided not to. But you start thinking about why. And then what, where is, what are those feelings coming from? And then you see someone else going through the same thing and you feel really bad for them because you know what it is and, and all that. So I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time talking about it because I don't want to, I don't want to talk about certain people because there is a lot of these things that go on in my life, but I try to, I try to really just go, they're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. What can I do to make my situation better? Okay. And sometimes what that means is you either need to distance yourself from that person because that person is making you feel bad about yourself or you need to help in a way that you can, but you can't fix the way that they feel. Oh, it happens, man. <laughs> How can you hate on the West? It happens, man. There, I, 
here's the deal. It, it is what it is. Like it's, it's, it's a jealousy thing. Sometimes it's a, someone's afraid to do something. Um, no matter what, like I'm going to tell you right now, I've been doing this for four years, but if you knew me in my past life, if you knew who I was, then you would, you would be like, wow, what's this guy doing? You know, how is this guy doing this? Because I used to make fun of people who do this. So <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother style. What is up, silly goose in the house over on TikTok? We've got a group, good group over here in TikTok as well. Um, I do want to tell you guys, like I said in the beginning, we got I need 20 more subscribers on YouTube. So if you can hit that link in my bio and go subscribe to my YouTube, that'd be awesome because I get 2,200. But I pulled up some quotes here about controlling what you can control. Agreed, Frank. This is one of the things that I say too. It's like the past is the past. The lessons that you learn from the past. And it's funny because I always think about this. I've been married for 24 years this year. I didn't date a whole lot of, of girls when I was, before I got married. Like I got married when I was 19. So basically my dating career was in high school. And um, I think I probably had like three or four girlfriends. But each one that I had, I knew that they had something that I did not want and they had something that I did want, like these traits, right? And I figured out what those traits were. And every relationship I had, I just on to the next one. And then, like I said, it was like four or five on to the next one until I finally found the person that met all these traits that I wanted. So like you're single in it, you're just pushing it down until you get to where you want and you find the one. It's weird, but that's, you know, that's how I think about it. So here's some quotes about controlling what you can control. Okay, yeah, dating career. That's kind of what it was. <laughs> that's the way I think about it. Um, you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude towards what happens. You and in that, you will be mastering change rather than allowing it to master you. And I talked to my daughter about this a lot because she's talking about this kid yesterday. It was funny. I, I talked about the new shoes um, yesterday. And this kid... She, she talks about this kid every day at school. And I swear, if she wasn't so nice, if, if I knew that if she got in a fight with this kid, because I've never seen the kid before, I, I swear, sometimes I'm just like, do it, you know? <laughs> the dating pool has pee and poo in it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but this kid, you know, like, why, do, why are kids so mean? I don't get it. Air Force Ones are the big Nike, you know, Nike's thing right now. Like everyone, everyone wants Air Force Ones. Like all the kids are wearing them, whatever. So my daughter goes to school yesterday and this kid goes, those shoes look cheap. They look like you got them from Walmart. And he's wearing the same damn shoes she's wearing, just a different color. And I just laughed. I'm like, where do these kids come from? Why does this kid have so many problems with my daughter? And my daughter can't figure out how to just like deal with the situation. But I told her a hundred times the same thing that I'm telling you, like you cannot control his reaction, but you can control your reaction. So you need to be willing to go in there and ignore him. And we got told that all the time and it wasn't so easy for us either. But by giving them the power, which is exactly what you're doing when you allow them to manipulate you, because that's what they're trying to do, right? They're trying to get you in those fields. And that's, that's the hard part for an empath, right? Because we go right to the feels. We go right to it. We allow them to manipulate who we are. And 100% of the times, we are really good people. Exactly. Yep. They do see it. So Alicia over on TikTok says they see how their parents treat or interact with people. And that's the thing. Like maybe their parents do the exact same thing. But... I don't know, like, it, it's funny, because I wish that you could have blinders onto that stuff, like with kids. But she can control the reaction, right? Like, and the first thing for little kids is that like, they want to tattle, or they want to say, well, this kid hurt my feelings. So how can I hurt this kid back? Right? He might like her, you're right. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I mean, the reality is, is that my, 
I don't know. My my daughter, you know, girls grow faster than boys. This kid has skipped a grade. My daughter is 10. She's, you know, two or three inches away from looking her mom in the eyes. Her mom's 5'5", five five, so she's probably about as tall as you, Nikki. Uh, but anyway, I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like, why do we have to be this way? So I, I, I'm constantly telling her to think about how she reacts because that kid is trying to get her attention. That's all there is to it. And it's either, yeah, like Nikki said, liking him or liking her or annoyed by her because she's tattled on him because he doesn't listen and behave in class, which, again, like I told her, this is not your problem. This is where control what you can control comes down to. If a kid is doing something in class, it's the teacher's job to take care of that, right? Not your job. So what are you doing? Are you sitting in, like she the other day, she's telling me, well, I got in trouble for drawing. What are you doing? You're drawing when you're not supposed to be. Now, because you've sat there and you've told this teacher that this kid is doing this or that or blah, 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 you're going to get in trouble because he's going to tattle on you because he's trying to get back at you for tattling on him. It's just a never-ending story. So just do your work. Take care of Tatum. And... Sometimes that's the hardest thing because you think that you're you're, you're wrong <clears throat> and you have to work through it. So that's kind of the thing that I wanted to talk about today because I think that we get lost in that. And I just want people to remember that I cannot control what always goes on outside, but I can always control what goes on inside. So when someone has a problem with you, you have to deep dive into yourself and realize that how am I going to fix this situation within myself because I am feeling bad about something? And this is, again, an empathetic thing because that's how it is. I feel like, what did I do wrong? How is this my fault? How can I fix this? Sometimes you can't fix it. Sometimes you cannot fix the things that other people have going on. Okay? And that's all there is to it. And just because you feel a certain way does not mean that that is the truth. So I want you to think about that today. I want you to sit down and think about how far you've come, who you are, and does it really matter what the other people think about you? And does it really matter that they're in their feelings and you're not? Because what you need to do is you need to take care of yourself first. Okay? That's it. Control what you can control. You can control how you react. You can't control how they react. And just because someone had a bad reaction doesn't necessarily mean that it's your fault. There are reasons why things happen. You never know what they're going through. I'm telling you, like thinking about this this death threat situation that I went through, what is that guy going through? What are those people going through? You know, maybe they've been divorced and they're having a hard time because it's Christmas time and they don't have anyone to hang out with at Christmas. Even though it may be their own fault, they still feel that way because they don't know how to handle that situation. Maybe their grandmother or grandfather died at this time and they're dealing with that and they have a hard time dealing with that situation. You know, there are so many things that can trigger people at certain times of the year and you just don't know what it is but that's not your fault. So again, control what you can control. That's it. That's what I got. And uh, again, thank you for hanging out with me. We got a Patreon supporter, Nikki, in the house. She's here every single morning. She's a moderator. Frank, thanks for hanging out. I know that it's a little early on your end. Um, But uh, we're going to keep on moving forward. Tomorrow, I don't, I might, I'm going to go live. I'm going to do it. As long as nothing else, barring anything else, I will in the morning. I have an interview tomorrow for Shaping Success, which I've been doing those sporadically here and there. I've got one tomorrow. It was really, you know, I get these people who reach out to me all the time and say, hey, do you, I want to be on your show, love the show. And then they're like, they'll say something like, oh, someone goes, I love the show. You're almost to 250 downloads or almost to 200 downloads. And I'm like, dude, I'm almost a freaking 
I'm or almost to 250 episodes. I'm almost a freaking 300 episodes. So you haven't been paying attention. Don't lie to me. You don't know. You don't know me and you want to be on my show. So you just want to get on my platform. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> opposite rant. I don't have to let them on. That's all there is to it. So go out there today, bust it down. We will be doing morning coffee tomorrow. Control what you can control. And remember, remember that you are in charge of you. Nikki, thanks for being a Patreon. Frank, thanks for hanging out. We've got a lot of people in the chat room who have been in and out. It's pretty cool. Someone's been tapping the screen. Multiple people have been tapping the screen. Um, until next time, I challenge you to find the ship of your success. Thank <laughs> you.